comes this morning. Awesome. God bless you, Charlie. Let's go. Good Praise Lord. God. Hey. hey, hallelujah. Well, let's give Jesus a shout this morning. I told Gail that uh, I looked at my clock this morning at around two o'clock, and then it turned to three suddenly. And I said, that is not the Lord. How many are awake this morning? How many are alive this morning? Praise God. I'm getting there. No, I'm kidding. Hallelujah. How many have been enjoying the meetings? It's been awesome. David had me, had me laughing quite, quite, uh, quite a lot last night. How many enjoyed David last night? Yeah, he'll be here at 11. And uh, how many are going to stay for the 11? Well, God bless you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna... to... Anyways, okay, so... Let's go to Ephesians this morning. I I, I want to um, talk to you about um, a thing that's on everybody's mind this morning, which is time. So go to Ephesians. Thank you, Lord. Ephesians chapter 5. Uh, Verse 16 says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Say, redeeming Redeeming. the time. time. Now, you uh, may or may not uh, recognize this or not, but if you are an avid study of history and you begin to study out um, history throughout the ages, you begin to see uh, patterns that happen throughout history, and cycles that transpire in the earth, um, and, they, and they move, and, and David talked a little bit about this, he, he actually touched on a set, like seven year cycles, but there are even greater cycles that happen uh, throughout, throughout the different ages and times, because everything uh, under the sun uh, happens in cycles, say cycles. And the Bible says that there are these cycles that transpire. In fact, the Bible says in the, in the book of uh, Ecclesiastes that there's nothing new underneath the sun. In fact, every successive age or time has a cycle to it. And there are similar things that happen during those cycles. And God looks for those that he can bring into the earth during those cycles of chaos and turmoil to bring uh, them into the conformity of his presence and power. And so we can look at time and we can look at history and we can see where the enemy wants to come in and he wants to create havoc. He wants to create uh, different types of chaotic moments. And he, you know, the devil never does anything new. He always does the same things over and over again. And in fact, he only has one goal. And so God is looking for those that will go diametrically opposed to the things that the enemy wants to do and diametrically opposed to the things of darkness and evil and begin to redeem those times and bring God's glory and presence. We can either live in the time or the moment or we can transform time by the power of the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. And so there are actually three forms of time. There are uh, what, what the Bible talks about in the, in the Greek called aeon. Aeon time is the successive moments in human history. It's, all, it's really chronological time. And these are things that happen throughout human history that move in cycles. Then there is what is called hora time. Say hora time. Hora time is actually heavenly time. Did you know that time is in heaven? There has to be time in heaven because there's music. And if you're a musician, you understand that everything uh, has to do with music has to do with time. And so around the throne, there is actually time. And God created time. Time is not something that is evil. It is something that God created. 
And so even around the throne, there is music and there is time. But that time that is around the throne is, is a time that is perfected. A time that is perfect. A time that is without corruption, without, uh, without chaos, and without delay. That's the time that we are actually supposed to live out of. That's the space and the place that God has called us to live because Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 says that we're seated with Christ in heavenly places. So you've not been called to live underneath time, but you've been called to live above time. You actually have been called to rule over time. And you've been called as a ruler in the earth to redeem that which is born in a place of chaos, confusion, and, 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 try to be, and trying to be birthed out of the demonic. Because we know that we live in a fallen world. How many know that we just, we, we can turn on the news right now and there's always something that's happening that is not God. But God has called us as believers to live above that chronological order that the enemy uh, seems to operate in because you have to understand that when Jesus went to the cross, listen to me, when Jesus went to the cross, the mo moments before he went, he said to his disciples, he said, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Something has already transpired Something has already happened, but we just need to begin to recognize it. And so what happens as believers and as really uh, charismatics and Pentecostals, we look at times and seasons and things that are happening in the earth, and we think automatically of end times. We think that this is the end of the world, and we begin to go along with the cycle that's happening. It's quiet in this, in this church this morning. I know it's 9 a.m., but you're going to shout at me because I need it, okay? So, for instance, if you study out history, what you'll find is in, in, in uh, 1918, uh, when uh, the Spanish uh, pandemic was happening, at the exact same time was the First World War. And so, even right now, there is another cycle that is in the planet, in the earth, where we've just came through a pandemic, and now what are they talking about? And during, the eight, and during that 1918 period, Pentecostals and, th and, and, and those that were of the similar kind of belief system that we are a part of also believed that it was the end times and that the Antichrist was coming on the earth. And that Gog and Magog were, were, was, to, was happening because of Russia and because of Stalin and the things that were happening there. And they were going to move across. And all the things that are in, in the book of Revelation and the book of, of Daniel were all going to happen during that time. But how many of you know that although there are things that are going to happen, we can actually push those things back so that the harvest... Listen to me this morning. The harvest that is for our age and for our time can actually be reaped. That there is a faith that can come on us where we can actually redeem the time. And although the time is evil and there's corruption in that time and the enemy has a plan and a purpose for that time, we can actually grab a hold of that time, bring it into the heavenly places and see redemption happen. We see this because, because uh, the Bible talks about how uh, there's, there's, there, is, uh, there is aeons of time, there is hora time, and then there is kairos time. Say kairos. Now, we think of kairos as the God divine moments of explosion. How many, how many have ever heard somebody preach on the kairos times? They're the divine timings of God. And that is true. But Kairos actually means the time when things are brought to crisis. So Kairos is actually for chaotic moments and moments of crisis. God actually uses the Kairos moments to change and transform 
those moments of crisis that the enemy is trying to bring destruction, decay, and trying to bring us to calamity, uh, God actually uses his kairos moments to bring those things into his perfect divine alignment. How many are getting hold of this this morning? Now, turn with me uh, to 1 Corinthians 15. So time is on a cycle. And that cycle can either be a cycle of the horror perfected moments of God, or it can be in a cycle of the demonic and evil. But it isn't God's choice. It's our choice. It's quiet in here. It's actually our choice the time that we live in. Because while, you know, and, and, and because time is created, people are also experiencing different times. The person next to you is seeing time from a different perspective than you might be seeing time. And while time keeps moving, you can actually move out of time and live above it and begin to see even things that you missed, moments that you've missed, redeemed and brought back. Some of you this morning feel like the time that you live in right now, uh, that there was something that God wanted you to do, but that time has passed, and now you, you're just moving through time, and the, you can't redeem that again. You can't get that back. Or there's been things that have happened in time that you can't change or transform. But you can actually go back in time and see it changed. You can also move into the future and grab a hold of something that wasn't even necessarily for your time and pull it in the now. There's a, a, a prophecy that is, um, you know, that Bob Jones gave uh, that was, uh, was over a hundred years. Have you, how many of you guys have ever heard that prophecy by Bob Jones where he gave a hundred years? He gave like every decade. And he said, he said 2060 was the year of the manifestation of the sons of God. How many have heard that? Where he, he said, you know, he went through all the different decades and he said 20. 60 is the, uh, the decade of the manifest sons. You know, when I heard that, the Lord spoke to me and said, you know, you can pull that in now. You could actually pull that into this moment. I know you're in 1 Corinthians 15, but listen to this. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 says, there is a time for everything. A season for every activity under the heavens. So there is a time for everything, a set time for everything, a season for everything under the heavens under the heavens say under the heavens there is a time for everything a season for every activity under the heavens but who are those or who is determining what happens in that time that's the question And is it possible that we could take the time that is in corruption, that is in decay, because everything underneath the heavens is moving in a place where it, it is alive and then eventually dies? And could we go above that and live out of the place where God had created us to live in the garden 
where the Bible says that God created, look, look let's turn there real quick. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to break this down and then I'm going to prophesy over some people. He, uh, Genesis, Genesis chapter 1 verse 14 says, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons, for days and for years. Now, we think that that light is the sun, the moon, and the stars. But the Bible says that then God, in verse 16, created the two greater lights, which is the sun and the star, and the moon and the stars. So here in verse 14, there was something that was placed in the heavens that was the lights in the heavens that were to rule over the times and the seasons. Now, if you look at that in the original Hebrew, that word lights there is the same word for menorah. It actually, it's actually the seven spirits of God or the illuminaries or the creative lights of God that, that are, are illuminating and supposed to rule over the heavens. Now, a, um, Isaiah 11 says that we come out of the root of Jesse, and out of that root or out of that tree springs forth the seven spirits of God. And we often think of it as a tree, like a normal tree, but actually what it is is the menorah springing out. And we are to live out of the seven spirits of God, those burning illuminaries in the heavens. And out of that place of creative light, we are actually called to create time. And create moments in time that glorify and give God glory in the earth. But because of the fall, man fell underneath and began to be ruled by the star system. The system that is moving according to chronological time, dates and seasons, months and years, are now being ruled by something that we were supposed to be ruling over. And so when we see Jesus, Jesus tells Nicodemus, he says to Nicodemus, you must be born from above. Say above. And, Jesus, and Nicodemus says to him, he says, how can one be born from above if he doesn't enter into his, womb, his mother's womb a second time? And Jesus said to, to Nicodemus, he said, if you want to see supernatural miracles, you have to be born from that place or birthed out of a place of the second time. He says you must be born a second time. Or in other words, you have to be born out of a different time. Come on, somebody. You have, to be, you have to leave the time that you're in right now in the earth, and you have to be born from a different place. You have to actually be born in the heavens. You have to be born from a different perspective. You have to be born again. You have to be birthed out of another place. Because if you're birthed out of a different place, you'll begin to see from a different perspective. As long as you live out of the fallen state and not out of the new creation, then everything that you see will be out of a state of chaos and out of a place of decay. But if you're born from above and you're born out of the new, out of the new um, creation, you begin to see everything as redeemable. You begin to see things as re that can be redeemed and you see things as, as having redemption qualities that are actually there that are seeds that you need to speak to so that they begin to grow up a lot of times in the prophetic listen to me a lot of times in the perfect in, in the prophetic people prophesy out of a place that is in the earth instead of out of the heavens so what they see is the things that are coming in the earth but they're seeing it from a demonic perspective instead of saying uh, pulling back from that and maybe seeing from that perspective of what's happening but beginning to speak what God wants to happen
beginning to speak out of a place of faith. Because the Bible says that we prophesy according to our faith. Sometimes people think that, that prophets miss it because, it because it doesn't happen the way that they see it. But could it be that they were actually prophesying out of a place of faith? And the Bible says if two or three touch anything, it shall be done for them. So God often prophesies things in the earth and looks for others that will come alongside of it in a place of unity to see it birthed. God will show prophets things that are supposed to transpire in, in, on the planet that are uh, of, re, of redemption, are uh, to bring things back into the God alignments, but the Lord will release those words and then he'll look for his body to take a hold of them and begin to birth them in. Say, what are you saying, Brother Charlie? I'm saying that we can either live in the time that we're living in right now, and we can go along with the successive ages of time, or we can be what God called us to be, do what we've been brought on the earth to do, and begin to see the time that is evil redeemed and brought back to life. Because there are things that are in this word that have yet to happen, that God has prophesied about, that aren't necessarily just for uh, the imminent return of Christ. There are things that are here in this word that if we have eyes to see from a perspective of redemption, we will begin to see them in, in, the, in the Bible and we'll say, wait a minute, this isn't a time for the Antichrist, the end times, destruction, chaos. This is actually a time where God wants to birth something brand new in the earth and that while we're in a cycle, we can actually, we can actually bring the Kairos moment of God into that cycle and break the chaos and bring it into a place of conforming to the image of Christ. Because every age and every time period is supposed to be molded and fashioned after the, the image of Christ. Not just you and I, but all of creation is actually supposed to be molded and look like God. Every moment in time is actually moldable. You could actually take a hold of a moment in time and mold it to make it look like what God intended it for, for it to be. Amen. Watch this, Hebrews chapter 11. Aren't you glad you came this morning? You almost, you almost slept in, I know, I know. You almost hit the clock because it was so, so early. I didn't actually hit the clock, I just looked over at the clock and said, wow, it's already time. Okay. <laughs> Hebrews 1, chapter 1. Well, Hebrews 11, excuse me. Is this all right this morning? Yeah. You doing all right? Okay. Yeah. Hebrews eleven three. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Now, circle that word worlds there. That word worlds there is the word aeons. It is actually not just worlds like, uh, like um, the cosmos, which is, you know, the, the planet, the worlds that the book of, of Hebrews is speaking of here is actually successive time periods, aeons, which means that every aeon or every season in time is actually framed and fashioned by the word of God. And the word that is ever proceeding out of the mouth of God so there are things in the aeons of time, in the chronological orders of time, that God has predetermined and spoke that are supposed to happen. But it's through faith 
that we understand that these moments are moldable and we step into the word and we begin to speak. You missed it. You step into the word and you begin to speak. And what happens as we begin to speak, we step into that moment in history that is like a puzzle that, or, or a shattered mirror because of the chaos. And we step into the frame of that chaos and we begin to declare the word of God. And as we declare the word of God, everything that's in chaos and turmoil, everything that is in confusion gets spoken back into creative, creative power and brought into perfect alignment so that it looks like the image of God. Because the, the luminaries or the lights that were placed in the heavens that were called to, to rule over time uh, were called to rule and divide the day from the night. In other words, from, from that which is good and holy and that which is demonic and evil. Because when the Lord came and spoke over the waters in the earth in Genesis chapter 1, the earth was without form and void. It was in a place of chaos. It was in a place of confusion. But God spoke through his word, his creative power, and it began to move and began to look like the image of the Lord. So chaos and confusion was already in the, in the, in the, in the planet. The, the chaos and confusion was already here and was never going to leave. But God said, instead of chaos and confusion, I'm going to bring my light. And as I bring my light, I'm going to bring some people or humans that are like me, made in my image and my likeness, to rule over those things so that when there comes times and seasons where things are in chaos, they will ultimately be able to stand up during those moments and they will be able to speak into those situations. And what the enemy wanted and intended and planned for to happen would be aborted and brought into a place of null and void and God's presence and power will begin to move you are not here listen to me this morning I feel like preaching you're not here by divine by, by accident you're here by God's divine design you could have been brought in the earth at any moment in human history but God chose to bring you during this time because he knew that you would have enough faith to speak into this moment he knew Give me a little bit of, I need something coming out of this so that I can feel it at 10 o'clock in the morning. I need something coming out of this speaker right now to feel it. Listen to me. The power of the Holy Ghost has been put on the inside of you. The Spirit of God has been given to you. God's, God, listen to me. Adam was not God's perfect plan. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. There you go. Praise God. Glory, Jesus. The Holy Spirit was given to you, placed in you, and you were given the Holy Spirit so that the seven spirits of God could burn, illuminate out of you as a city set on a hill that could not be that could not be hidden, so that. When your city in the natural comes into chaos, comes into confusion, comes into disorder, you would be the illuminating light that would bring everything back into its perfect order in time. Say, I'm going to do it. So through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are, which which are seen were not made of things which do appear. In other words, we're not looking at the things which are seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. They're fading away. But the things which are unseen are eternal. Say eternal. 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 In other words, we're to look from the eternal perspective, see what God is saying, and bring those things into the earth. That's what the prophetic does. It actually co-creates the future with God. And, and, and it also, there are things that are unseen that are looking at you. 
Did you know that your destiny is actually looking at you? Your destiny this morning is actually staring at you. And it's, and it's looking at you and saying, do you actually believe what's been said? See, some of you feel like you've missed it and you've missed time, but God's just waiting for you to get with the time. You feel like the time has passed and you can't, you can't get that time back. But God's saying, actually, what I can do is I can bring that time and bring it into this moment. And all of the things that you did before that, that were out of chaos, out of corruption and sin, and all the time that you feel like you lost, I can actually redeem all that time. And bring it into this moment. So that everything that you felt like you missed, you will get back. Now turn with me to 1 Corinthians. I love this. I love this scripture. I've looked at it many a time. You missed that. Okay. 1 Corinthians 15. (laughs) Man, Jesus. (laughs) This is Paul the Apostle speaking to the Corinthians. a little drunk (laughs) this must be this like kind of remnants that are left over from David's message last night You know, Paul says that he speaks in tongues more than you all. I get drunk more than all, all of you in the Holy Ghost. Let me, let me reiterate in the Holy Ghost. Anyways, okay. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, um, which you have received and where you stand. And by which you are also saved and kept the memory of what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which um, I had also received, how Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried and that he rose again on the third day uh, according to the scriptures. And... Uh, verse 5 says, And he was seen by Cephas, then by the twelve. After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once. Um, the greater part remain unto the present, but some have fallen asleep. In other words, they died. Verse 7 uh, says, And after that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And verse 8, I've looked at this so many times. And the last of all, he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. One that was born out of due time. And that word there, meaning born out of due time, means that Paul felt as though he was one that was as if he was a child that was aborted. 
named but aborted and brought in a specific time where he had missed all of the things of the ministry of Christ. Because he had not seen Jesus during his earthly ministry. Because he was living in a different place in his life. And so he missed all of that time that he could have been walking with Jesus, walking with the disciples. And even some theologians believe that the rich young ruler that came to Jesus was actually Paul. You know, the rich rich young ruler that did all the good things, but Jesus said, go sell all that you have and come and follow me. And he went away very sorely and sad. Many, many, some scholars actually believe that was Paul because during that time, Jesus and Paul would have known each other. They actually would would have went to dueling schools of theology. They would have been under different rabbis and different toolages, but they would have known each other during that moment. But, but Paul had not come into that divine moment of the power and presence of God until Acts 9, where he is knocked off of his horse because he sees a light that's so bright that it blinds his eyes. And he says, out of that, uh, in that moment, he says, who are you, Lord? And Jesus says to him, I'm the Christ, the one that you're persecuting. And it's in that moment where Paul begins to be born again. And in that moment, God redeems, listen to me, God redeems all of that time that he had lost. All of the time that he lost, all of the moments that had transpired that he felt like he couldn't get back, God redeemed it in that moment because his illuminating light came to Paul and blinded his eyes. And the Bible says that he couldn't see for three days. In other words, after those three days, there was a resurrection. Can I prophesy to you this morning that God is going to redeem, he is going to restore, and he's going to bring alive everything that you feel like has been gone, and he's going to blind you from your past and bring you into the present moment and where you feel like you were birthed in the earth in an untimely manner that the things that were yet you were called to do were aborted I decree and declare over your life that God is going to redeem it God is going to bring it back and God is going to restore all those times and you are going to see Christ from a brand new perspective you're going to walk with him in the earth and as you walk with him you're going to begin to see the power of the Holy Spirit Spirit manifest in your life and the God of the God of Genesis 1 is going to become your God the God that speaks that prophesies that proclaims that redeems that brings to life that which is dead is going to begin to move upon you lift up your hands this morning now father you're redeeming you're restoring you're bringing back to life. You're redeeming. You're restoring. You're bringing back to life. You're redeeming. You're restoring. You're bringing back to life. You're redeeming. You're restoring. You're bringing back to life. Now, are you two are together, right? Let's come here, and I'm going to prophesy over you. Now, you felt like, just step out here. There was, just grab hands right there. Just grab hands. You felt like <clears throat> that that you... The time that you had placed and put in, all the time that you had done, in, in, in certain ways, all those times and seasons were a waste. You feel like, God, I can't get those times back. I can't get that time back. If I had seen from a different viewpoint, maybe, God, you could have spared me, you could have saved me, you could have changed something. But the Lord says, no. The things that were in the past are in the past. And the seeds that you planted are going to be things that are going to spring up. And although there's been some things that were not of God, that were, that were not of the Lord, 
the Spirit of the Lord would say to you that the fruit will remain. Place not your eyes on the things which are seen, the things which are transpiring or have taken place, but look at the things which are redeemable, the things that I've called you to walk in. For I place some things on the inside of you during that time that are for this time. And you've been in a transition period. You've been in a place of transition, but the Lord says that he's replanting you. And he's putting you in his vineyard. And this is going to be a season of the, of the finest of wine. And the greatest of fruit is going to come out. And where you felt like the, the wine and the vine had dried up, the Lord says that there's going to be even a greater harvest that's coming. And it's going to be the finest of wine. The greatest of taste. And you're going to begin to change. You're going to begin to be transformed even in a greater way. The Lord says that I stretched you. I transformed you to bring you into this moment. You didn't miss it. You are here for this moment and you're being planted on purpose. For the things that are on the inside of you are going to begin to grow. They're going to begin to flourish. And the faith that you had, that you felt like you lost, the Lord says is coming back double upon you. In Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. This lady right here in the purple, just step out for me. I want to pray for you. Is that okay? Yeah, you. You. Is that all right? Just step out here right now. Yeah, just right. No, no, I won't put you on the floor. God might put you on the floor. I won't put you on the floor. Just step right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just step right here. It's all right. Father, I just thank you for, what's your name? Carrie. Carrie, just take me by the hand. Father, I thank you for Carrie. Just close your eyes, Carrie. It's all right. Father, I thank you for Carrie. Lord, that you're going to carry her into your presence. And Lord, I thank you that you're redeeming, you're restoring, you're bringing back to life even her physical body. Lord, even right now, you're restoring everything that's been broken, everything that's been lost, everything that has been in chaos. I see the Lord bringing into perfect order. So, Father, I thank you right now for Carrie, that you're bringing her into the shalom of God. The peace that passes all understanding. For even there's been some things upon your mind as of late. Some things that have been going on in your mind that are moving in certain directions that uh, are not of God. But the Lord is bringing your mind into a place of peace, into a, peace, a place of rest, in a place of restoration and redemption. And I see those that have been around you that God is going to redeem. God is going to bring back. God is going to restore. And you've been praying about this. You've been wondering, is it possible? All the seeds the Lord says that you placed on the inside, put on the inside of even your children, God says, are going to come back. And those seeds are not... not uh, void and they're not dead so this morning I prophesy even over your children the life of Christ is coming into them the life of God is bringing redemption restoration and I thank you God for redeeming the time that you felt like you lost even with your kids uh, you felt like you lost time you felt like you lost them in time and it felt like there's time that you can't get back but the Lord says that he's going to redeem that time he's going to bring it back and where uh, there has been disrupt disruptances in the relationships in your family the Lord says that I'm going to redeem them those times and I see uh, dinners again around around the table 
and this has been something that you remembered and you said, God, I want that back. And God says, I'm going to give it back to you, daughter. I'm going to give it back. And the things that the enemy has stolen uh, through e even addiction, God says that I'm going to restore it. I'm going to give it back and I'm going to redeem it. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for Carrie. I thank you for the redemption and the restoration and the revival of her family in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Come on, lift up your hands right now. Let's... Thank you, Lord. Let's just lift up your hands right now. Lord, I thank you. Man, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Just lift up your hands right now. Just to open up your mouth and start worshiping. And God, I thank you this morning. There are things that we haven't seen, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and hasn't even entered into our heart, the things which you have prepared for us. Because you love us, God. And your love is compelling us in this hour, bringing us in to your perfect moment, your perfect time, your Kairos moment, your Kairos time. And Father, I thank you right now that you're even, even bringing bodies back in time. Oh. That's it. Just open up your mouth. Just worship him right now. Because worship is a timeless realm. It's that realm of horror time where everything is brought into perfection. When you worship God, God will lift your body, your physical body, into that time space. And everything that is out of alignment, everything that is broken, everything that is missing will suddenly come into alignment. Your, even your physical body where there's parts that are wearing out parts that are broken, parts that are missing, parts that the doctors say that they, there's no technology that can bring you back and restore that. God says, no, I have the technological advancement that you need. I have the technology. It's my light. It's my word. And this morning, I decree and declare over your life the light of God, the word of God into your physical body. Lord, I thank you that you're redeeming time. You're redeeming physical bodies. Lord, I thank you right now. Lord, I thank you for joints. I thank you for, for ligaments being restored by the power of the Holy Ghost. I thank you for bone structures being restored and renewed by the power of God. Come on, lift up your hands. Just worship Him right now. Just stand. Just, just, just stand right now. Lord, I thank you that this morning your hand is coming upon your people all across this auditorium. That your redeeming power through worship is bringing them back to life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you right now that miracles are manifesting in people's physical bodies. Lord, I thank you right now for your power moving throughout physical bodies in the name of Jesus. If you need a miracle, just start worshiping him right now in the atmosphere. Lord, I thank you for your healing power moving through people's bodies right now, redeeming, restoring. Lord, I thank you for facelifts right now. I thank you for redemption in people's physical bodies. Lord, I thank you for the fire of the Holy Ghost moving through bodies right now, moving through body parts right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing, nothing that is in chaos can remain. Lord, we decree and we declare the peace of God, the illuminaries of heaven, the seven spirits burning, 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 burning. 
burning out corruption, burning out decay, burning out everything that is not of the Lord in the new creation body. God, I thank you right now for redemption, restoration of the physical body in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for your physical bodies coming into perfection by the power of the Holy Spirit. Put it on your chest right now, Father, in Jesus' name. Oh. <laughs> That's it right there. Lord, thank you for healing. Thank you for restoration. Ooh, just take it. Just take it. Just take it. Just take it right now. Restoration healing physical healing in your body right now lord i thank you i thank you i thank you i thank you i see in god even touching breathing just right now you're breathing god i thank you for opening up uh the breath in people's bodies god i thank you for healing hearts right now lord i thank you for touching physical bodies right now where they've been under the strain of time and, and chaos and corruption have been touching the physical body. Lord, I thank you for redemption right now. Ooh. I thank you for restoration right now. Ooh. That's it. Just drink that in right now. Oh. Ooh, thank you, Lord, for that glory just falling right now. Whoa. Thank you, God, for that glory just, just coming right now. Yeah, that's it. Just receive it. Ooh. Wow. Wow, thank you, Lord, for that glory. Just look at that. Lord, thank you for that canopy right now, just resting over your people. Just take it right now. Just receive it right now. Whatever you need is in the atmosphere right now. Just take it right now. As you as you got your hands on, on, on your on yourself, just receive it right now. 
Just receive it right now. All across this building right now. Lord, thank you for redemption. Thank you for restoration. That time travel miracle right now. God, thank you for the canopy of your glory. Wow. Thank you, God, for the canopy of your glory that's resting in this place. God, thank you for your glory. thank you this morning for everything that you're doing if god's touching you right now just lift up your hand right now wave it at me god did something for you this morning you got you feel like the pain is gone i'm not going to call you up but just wave at me something happened in your physical body something changed just wave at me right now just wave at me wow come on come on come on just wave at me big wave right now god did something in your physical body right now and something changed. Maybe you had a pain, something left. Maybe your eye was blind or you couldn't see out. It just opened. Something happened. Just wave at me right now. Come on. Come on, Jesus. Come on, let's give God a hand. Awesome, guys. Hey, let's just give uh, Charlie one more big thank you. Man, what awesome. What an awesome morning. Listen, we'll be back at uh, 11 o'clock with uh, David Herzog. Listen, uh, tonight's going to be packed, so you're going to want to get here early, especially if you're here, uh, if you're a part of SRC, I want to make sure that you get a seat. If you're not part of SRC, you might have to sit on the ground, so bring a pillow. Um, Just kidding, just kidding. But seriously, it's going to be packed tonight. No registration tonight. Um, You are loved. Thanks for being a part of the week. This has been an amazing week, and for everybody that served, for all of our volunteers that have been helping this, look, look, can we just celebrate? You guys are so awesome. You guys are so cool. Love you. Pray you get lots of rest this week. God bless you. All right. Talk soon. Peace out.